Hello everyone. Uh, how are you all doing? Uh, I believe you all are doing great. Uh, and uh, welcome to our session, Meet the Global Leader, episode 24. And uh, you all know that uh, the objective of the session is to share the ex life experience of uh, our guests uh, who basically from uh, different uh, countries. So uh, we invite them to share their life experience so that uh, our main audience who are university students and then who want to be an entrepreneur, they can get an idea of how people are working and developing and gaining some skills, experience uh, around the world. And through their eyes, they can learn something and they can get some insights and they can implement it in their life. So today uh, we have invited uh, Anna from Brazil. Uh, welcome Anna to our show. Uh, basically, she's the uh, executive director at Viven and she is also the co-founder of Omen Friendly. Uh, she's also the board member of uh, Civicas uh, Global Alliance and ambassador of Human Rights Monitoring Initiative in Brazil. And you all know now she is from Brazil. So now welcome to our show and uh, it would be great if you share, if you introduce yourself with us again. Thank you so, thank you so much, Margo. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Yeah, right, right. Good evening to everyone in Bangladesh. First, I'd like to say that I love Asia. Unfortunately, I haven't been to Bangladesh yet, but I have worked with people from Bangladesh. What was such a good time in my life during some of my previous experiences in life. So it's a pleasure to be speaking with you. As my book says, now I'm working in the third sector, but I'm so a social entrepreneur. Uh, uh, I come from the private sector, so I hope I can share some of the skills I have acquired and developed and share with you like how you can find your road and see how I can uh, give you hints how you can ach make, achieve your goals as a social entrepreneur. So thank you so much. Hope you have a good time here. Yeah, we believe so. so Anna, can you introduce, uh, sorry, can you share uh, about your student life? Uh, especially uh, your university life, what did you study and what did you do apart from your study? All right, so first I'd like to say that I don't have like a linear horizontal academic career, definitely. I have studied journalism. In Brazil, we have like the public universities as the best ones in Brazil. So public, basically we do a global assessment and according to your score, you can attend these public universities or not. So I was, uh, I could make it to two univer different universities. One is the Federal University of Pernambuco, my hometown, where I took journalism, but I also make it to business administration in the public university of the state, ran, ran by the state. I know it sounds complex, but Brazil is a big country. We have like schools and universities that are ran by the federal government and by the local state government. So I attended both, which are super generalistic. Journalism, it's like into the humanistic field, it's generalistic, generalistic. Business administration, it is. Because I had a dream to use the best of my skills, what I believe was like communication. I have always been a good communicator during school. But administ business administration would provide me skills, hard skills, I thought by that time, to run a business, you know, to focus on my career. So I was wondering by that time how I could put these two together. The skills that are super pragmatic and effective in terms of running your career or making a business, but also other skills that would be delightful for me, such as communication. So pretty much this is what I got from bachelor's. So I have two bachelor's, but I also have my, the most recent degree I have, actually it's not the most recent, but I also have a master, executive master's at IE Business School in Madrid for my digital marketing and co corporate communications. Most recently, I also took a, a diploma in Pink School, which is from Amsterdam for creative leadership. This was a program uh, oriented for those who work in the public service or in the third sector. And across all this journey, I also took some other courses that I super highlight here that are important for those who want to be entrepreneur, such as business negotiation. So I attended this course, which was focused on the Harvard methodology. So you can learn how to enter into a room 
and start negotiations that tend to be fruit fruitful. And it applies for every single aspect in your life. And also other courses such as international business negotiations, you know. So across my journey, I have different diplomas. And as you could see, in different fields, because I was just following what the market was telling me, what as a leader I was requiring as a skill by that time. Excellent. You have a, uh, you have a zeal to go knowledge. Uh, I, I can understand. Uh, you always go for new uh, uh, experience new diploma and you studied so amazing like engineering business leadership uh, business negotiation uh, which is uh, we are going to uh, talk about that uh, later on uh, what what made you uh, go that far that uh, whenever you feel is it like whenever you uh, feel to learn something new based on the situation or environment uh, I go for new, yeah. uh, gain new uh, skill or uh, new courses. Yes, Mahabub. I think there is this, as I said, like in my bachelor's, both were generalistic. It's bad because you don't become a super specialist in a field, Brundia, but on the other hand, I developed somehow a systemic view. When you have a systemic view of like how society is being ran, how business are being shaped, you know, how is the economy is doing, it's easier for you to foresee, to anticipate what kind of skills you may need to perform. So this is what pretty much was what was guiding me, you know? So but there was a time that at certain point was in a while, I'm not a specialist. I have been through so, through so many different fields, but on the other hand, I was acquiring so many broad knowledge that for a leader to run, to make decisions are so important in terms of having a 30, 360 degrees view of any issue and challenge that I just couldn't make this roadmap in my mind. Trying to see the big picture and anticipate what kind of skills are we require to run properly a team, to run per properly a business, you know? And I think like on the, bottom line of anything is understanding that we have we are in a fast changing world fast changing economy fast changing technological means to achieve your goals so it will require you to be a endless learner you know always humble and trying to you know pick the hints the future is providing you and see how you can keep up with the requirements the society needs uh, for you to, to deliver, you know. Yeah, it's uh, wonderful. I mean, uh, there is a saying, okay, you need to uh, learn new skill after like uh, two or three years, every two or three years. Maybe now it's like, you know, uh, like a new version of a mobile phone, iPhone 12, iPhone 13. So you need to be update yourself uh, so fast uh, to add up with the you know like change. Uh, so uh, during your uh, education, uh, during your study, uh, what skills basically you develop while you uh, were a student? When I was a student, uh, that's nice. Like to make me think about like when I was in the university. Well, I mean that's what, like also I want to provide you if you like to a kind of context here. My business management school was much more into liberal philosophy. Whilst my journalist university were more left-wing Marxist. And for that was, I used to like go to the journalist university in the afternoon and in the evening going to the business administration uh, university. And it was, and for me it was great to learn how to switch and being really like, well, I have to listen and understand from where these people are coming from, you know? So if I could give you like, this is not so tangible, sorry if I'm frustrating you, but because I was living both worlds, I learned how to circulate very well. 
I learn how to understand people, you know, and this is for me so primarily for if you want to achieve success as a leader, because I definitely here when I'm funding raising for my organizations, I understand where my funds raise uh, my, my, my grant is coming from. When I'm dealing with government, I know what, what's their background. So if I could give a suggestion for those who are in the university, try to open your minds, you know, the most you can. Listen, read, you know, go out with different people, leave your bubbles, you know. This is for me one of the great achievements for the university. Of course, I had wonderful professors, lovely debates, you know, like, as I said, in terms of being more, in terms of more like, so after my university time, I guess all that I have said, negotiation, you know, leadership, it came all after university. To be really honest with you, both universities provide me with those skills for really like the two first years of my career. Then I started to really pursue different skills. But living between these two different worlds for me was so enriching. And definitely it's for me something that makes a better, bigger person. And it's easier for me to understand, like sometimes you have a hidden agenda on the table and it's for me, somehow I learned how to dress things that are not said, you know, that are in between. And so I think this was not as like, even like, I feel emotional, like, because this is something that I can really think about that time, you know? Yeah, time of, you know, like you're in the, uh, you are in the ocean of, uh, uh, knowledge and you need to you know collect all the information as much as possible it's a life of you know like endless freedom and you just need to learn and enjoy life so yeah <laughs> i feel yeah I, I miss my university uh life so uh after after that after uh completing your uh, education uh how what did you uh do like uh, how did you start your career and in which sector? Uh, well, right. So, like, when you are studying journalism in Brazil, like, uh, I guess about about the two ending years, final years, you have those open calls for trainships, internships, you know, so you can become a trainee of a media group. I was fortunately selected for one of, like, which actually used to be the oldest newspaper is still active in Latin America. So I was selected as a trainee to write about human rights, which is funny because by that time, what I had in mind as was I was taking business management as my second bachelor degree, I was, my eager was to write about economics, you know, and deal with like businessmen, economists, but what I was selected was for to, it was to write uh, about human rights, which actually is the field where I'm working now. So I started as a trainee, as a reporter in a traditional newspaper, which for me was, again, a chance to burst my bubble because I was getting to the favelas, the slums, the poor communities in Brazil, which are pretty violent, working across police stations, but also interviewing the president, interviewing the governor. So again, I was always switching, you know, and dealing with more and more people, which was so enriching for me and also provided me a good sense of reality you know in terms of understanding which are the social issues brazil has the social challenges my people have you know by that time recipe my hometown was like one of the most dangerous for a, wing, a woman to live you know I, we had like dozens of women being killed by their husbands you know because of all the patriarchal culture we are we are that's inherent in the latin culture so imagine how many mothers I had interviewed that had lost their daughters because they were killed by their son-in-law. And today I am a feminist. I work to protect women. So I can tell you that like that beginning of my career was really, really like crucial for make me the professional I am now. So I started as a trainee again. I was still taking business administration. By that time, I was a TV reporter as well. By that time, I had the chance also to work with internet news, also with radio. So it was a good chance for me to like, as a reporter, as a journalist, to have this holistic experience. But then I started to, oh, oh my God, I want to switch to the corporate world. 
I, I had that business administrating side of me. That was when I applied for an internship in China. And then things changed abruptly. I started to work with large corporations. First of all, I was working on assignment of international PR in the city of Wuhan, which is pretty famous, unfortunately, because of the COVID now. And then I switched to Shanghai and I started to work with supply chain and things changed abruptly in my career. So, wow. So I started as a so-called reporter, Mabu, and then I switched to the corporate world after all. So it's like a very uh, you know, colorful journey, I must say, because uh, the wonderful thing is you work for, uh, and still uh, have been working for uh, human rights. And uh, just excuse me. Sure, take your time. Sorry. Uh, You've been working for, uh, you know, human rights, uh, protecting uh, females. You know, the thing is, uh, for that you have to have some uh, uh, inbound characteristics. Like you, you, you need to love human beings. You need to have some empathy for them, and you really need to uh, have some passion uh, to the thing that you are working on. So. Uh, when you are working for that uh, as a reporter, uh, as a trainee, so, uh, was it like, oh, why I'm doing this? You know, some people basically here, uh, they are like, okay, I'm doing this trainee internship or traineeship. Instead of learning, they try some, some you know, like some trainees that, or interns, they, they, they say like, okay, so what am I doing? It's not like, uh, it's, I, I, this work does not hold me. So it's like, you know, instead of respecting the task or job, they basically try to look for another opportunity while they should, you know, develop some skills and learn some uh, new things and, you know, the company and the culture. So uh, did you feel like, oh, uh, what, am, what am I doing? Or uh, instead of learning or uh, truly knowing about that sector or uh, tasks. Yeah, and that's if, interesting. If not, or if yes, how did you combat those uh, like uh, negative thoughts? Well, you know, Marvel, I think like every day when we wake up, it doesn't matter if you're in internship or you are a 60 years old CFO of a large corporation, we, we should have a purpose. You know, and purp with purpose, anything, com everything comes along. So I was, by the time addressing your question, much less caring about like skills, actually, and much more about my purpose. So I was like nominated for several national prizes. And I know that for some reason, the reason behind I didn't get them, it was, of course, a great achievement of me. I was so young being nominated for, for a prize along with people with like much more time than me on the road, you know? But on the other hand, by that time I was, when I was in internship, I was like thinking about people. And that was, the, it's interesting because it was about people that made me switch to corporate work because it was kind of frustration. I'll give you an example. I was, uh, because of uh, 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 an article that I was writing, we could release a guy that was in jail unfairly, you know? I found the case. I remember my editor, my leader was like not giving much for it. I said like, no, 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 this is impossible. We should go after this. This is my purpose to make justice. And this is what moved me, you know? I was so young, I don't judge myself. I had some other colleagues who were still in the news office who were much more caring about edition, perfect writing. And this is the thing like, because I, I had that purpose mo moving me, caring about people, I didn't mo make, make it to get the prizes, but I was nominated. And I, it's not about prizes that I should work for. What I'm saying that you should try to balance both, but on that time, purpose and people were the, my drivers. And I don't judge myself because this is what brought me here. And by that time, after one year, my second year, I was hired as a, as a after training, I was hired as a so-called reporter. 
with a full-time contract, which was pretty impressive for my age. But on the other hand, after the second year working in a news office, I was like, okay, I'm reporting exactly the same things and things don't change. That was so frustrating for me. That's why I felt like maybe I should go to the corporate world because there we can make decisions and maybe this is it, blah, blah, blah. And I made this change to the corporate world. Now I'm working in the third sector and putting together these two worlds, let's say, you know, again, journalists and, and, and business administration, corporate and human rights in my, in my present life. So if I could give you a, a hint for those who are in an internship, some, uh, try to balance, but if it's not possible, find a purpose. Because as I said, if I didn't have, uh, I didn't have a purpose, I didn't even, I wouldn't have even got hired, you know. So more purpose than skills. But it, but if you want to find, you can balance and have the, the develop your skills. So go for both. But never get rid of purpose. Wonderful. I know that the way yeah, you have been uh, sharing your experience, it, you, you really own those things. It, this, this is really wonderful. And it can, uh, yeah, we can understand through your uh, expressions that uh, the positivity uh, is coming out of your uh, mouth as you believe it and you're working on it. So uh, on this point, uh, I would like to uh, ask you to share a bit about in brief, uh the company the organization you you uh, are working for like given what is it about and what 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 do you do there and also women friendly and civicas global alliance and also uh human rights monitoring initiative and what are the common themes among all these organizations why you are involving and how you are managing your time to contribute in those organizations and how those organizations are creating impact in your community. So it's a, All right. a big question, <laughs> but I think it will, it, will, it will be helpful for you to you know, share a bit and also uh, at the end, how those, these organizations are creating positive and impactful, uh, uh, or creating positive impacts uh, for the society. Okay, so let me start from, from the common ground, okay? So the common ground of all these organizations because they all want to change the world, you know? So they have human rights in the core, addressing it from different means. So let me start with even the organization where I am the chief as a creative officer. I have started in December. It's an NGO that's super young. We started in 2019, a couple, from Brazil has learned from experience in Australia from the high resolves that is a talent organization that from more than 15 or more than 15 years have been working with citizen education, which means fighting against the, the gender inequality, fighting against races. Uh, in, we, our main interventions is in two schools, public and, and private schools, you know? So what we do basically here is really adjust our curriculum to enter into the school's curriculum and provide for those teenagers citizen education classes in order to make different leaders in the future. So we assume that we, if we started to address the challenge like inequality, races, poverty, uh, we're gonna create at schools from that age of range, we're gonna start to shape future leaders that we would think about how to make uh, the future more inclusive. So pretty much this is our, our main mission, our main goal. I am the executive officer. We have 10 people working. Like last year was to, to three of us only. Now we are 10, so we are growing exponentially using technology, innovation, and we have a diverse team with people from all across, across Brazil working remotely. What makes me so proud of like how we could coordinate this properly during such a hard time, which it was the pandemics. And we have already reached our impact goal. And now we are starting to design, which is going to be our challenge next year. As for Women Friendly, this is an organization that I founded in 2017 after working for the Olympic Games. I used to be an executive in the 
International Relations Department for the Rio 2016 Olympic Organizing Committee. After that, I took, and by that time, I was also taking my master's in Spain, flying all around. So imagine I really need some rest. I took a sabbatical and I started to think, well, after this chapter of my life, what should I do? And as I explained here before, one thing during my reporter life that used to shock me was the violence against women. And me, myself, I have been harassed several times as a reporter, as an executive, you know, the misogyny is all across. It's not only, let me say, and we have to admit, it's not only a Latin American Brazilian thing. Like we have this issue across the globe. So this is a pain point that humanity has to address. And what happens is I put together my experience as an executive of some of the largest organizations in Brazil. And along with my partner, who is a lawyer, we have developed this business, which is a, kind, it's a, consult a consultancy for organizations to learn how to fight against sexual harassment. And we work with across three pillars, corporate education. So we educate every single person in the organization, leaders, and like employees, how to identify when a harassment is taking place, how to prevent it from the beginning, and how to foster a culture that is sustainable to everyone. And a second, we are cross around like how we can create safe spaces and safe channels for women and men, as because men can be harassed as well, to ask for help, and how we create a governance from this point onwards so the organization can have uh, an effective intervention, firing this person providing some extra courses for the organization. Anyways, three pillars that work across the organizations and also bars, restaurants, festivals, because we understand that women should feel safe to work and circulate and consume wherever they decide. So this is women friendly. I have my partner who is also, it's our side job actually, but we are proud because we have our red impacted 150,000 people in Brazil. So this is it, like, wow, pretty much this is my two core jobs. But when as for Civicus, which is Alliance, the NGO that uh, advocates for the benefit and for the sake of the NGOs across the globe, I was elected member of the board because I used to have a volunteer job since 2018. I was part of several workshops as a volunteer to discuss how organizations can be more inclusive, more diverse, we have created me and this team as volunteers, a think tank to discuss how organizations can be more effective in order to become more diverse and inclusive. And that protagonist made me, uh, made me be invited for this position. I was elected by the members because it's the alliance. So every three months I will uh, wake up so early Discuss, to discuss the governance and operations of the Alliance, because this is the committee I was nominated. So you can see as a very organized and well-disciplined person. And as a, with a business administration background, I made use of these e skills to see how we can coordinate better the efforts of the Alliance and from the inside and outside efforts, because we have to care about people, we have to care about process, transparency, finance. And this makes me learn a lot because all the things I learned with my fellows in C because I apply at giving, I apply at women friendly. So this is also, like I said, like for me, it's a side, it's a, a way for me to be always learning with my peers. And lastly, the human rights monitor and, uh, initiative, it's we collect data for providing transparency about the situation of human rights activists in Brazil. As I know a lot of people, as you could see, I have circulated a lot. Journalists are always on the spot when democracy is on risk. So pretty much what I do is really reaching out these people and collect data and circulate the survey and then provide the reports for the organization. So it's pretty much, and as you can see, they are all connected. They are all making me learn. And this is all making me honor the purpose I have, which is making a fair life for everyone. Oh, wonderful. It's like I am, uh, not, not me also, we are going through a spiritual journey in a metaphoric way. So wonderful. I mean, the thing, uh, the, you see, the thing that you're, you have been doing is you, you're using and utilizing your skill and delegating it uh, towards people and 
implement some of the some of those uh, for the betterment of other people's life so this is the, the the reason i ask you the question is you know there are so many people who uh, have been working uh, maybe for different companies or uh, different ngos or they have maybe their own business whatever it is people can you know uh, contribute uh, in a small way or in a big, big way for the society you know in our in, in our country recently the, the, this culture is developing you know uh, i have my job and for my job i try to you know uh, learn from uh, this through this program by moderating this kind of program uh, after my job and try to understand and try to we want to empower ourselves with information and we want to more inspire ourselves uh, along with our audience and maybe our guests they they will feel more empowered that okay i have a platform to share my experience and it's very uh, you know wonderful to learn the story and experience life experience of a person uh, who is sitting somewhere else uh, in this world and this is very wonderful and we are using technology and you, you see it's a, a very fantastic thing if people uh, have zeal to learn they can you know by sitting anywhere they can learn anything so before going to our next question uh, there is one question or you have in our comment section let's uh, get this which is what is uh, uh, mr ramanul laman he is basically the chairperson of uh, school of entrepreneurship open he is working with us uh, he asked uh, what is your suggestions for young students while choosing their career uh, thank you for your question. Can you just repeat us again, Mahabul? What's your yeah, uh, uh, suggestion? Is uh, that for your suggestion? Young yeah, young yeah, students uh, while choosing their career. You know, so in our country, we are a developing country. We are developing. Okay, is, so sometimes you know, uh, in uh, the problem in developing countries is that sometimes uh, students they are puzzled. Uh, whether they should go for private jobs or uh, government jobs or go for, or start their own business, you know, they are in trouble. So, it will be great to know your solution. Well, uh, thank you for your question, and I'm super happy to address it. Uh, well, at my case, I think also there is a pressure from families. We usually, to, we are provoked to think about our career very young. And like, for example, in my case, my father wants me to be a lawyer and I was like, well, I want to be a journalist. Of course, I want to change the world with my writing, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, uh, what I, the message I would like to give to this, this youth is that like, well, doesn't matter whatever you choose, you know, and sometimes it's going to be confusing. Try to keep your mind open to see more what the world needs from you. What I'm trying to say, like I come, like I, I have explained the beginning of my lecture here, I come from a, a historical of being of like not very so horizontal, neither linear, you know, career. Because what drove me was purpose, the 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 need to learn and understand what the society need, needs from me. And as if you have this entrepreneur like eager inside of you. Like try to think, how are you gonna sort the humanity problems? And sometimes when you have a business that has nothing to do with human rights, you know, you can be also addressing some like constraints in the in the economics, in the society. And furthermore, you can be a super positive leader. This is the thing, like sometimes when people ask me how if they have a current job or a small business, you know, how they can they change the world. You don't have to work in an NGO, neither be an activist to do that. But when you are running your job, the way you run it, at Calais, the way you manage your people, the way you lead, you know, how you are giving purpose to do, to do your business is more important than anything. So we have today at Viven, people who have like a degree that has nothing to do to human rights. But inside of them, they had the eager to work with education and to change the world. For me, this is the best thing. I never asked for the diploma. I interviewed them to understand what moved them, you know. 
So for me, like, I don't know if I'm addressing properly the question, but for me, it's like, try to know more about yourself. What drives you? What makes you wake up every day, takes your coffee? Well, as a Brazilian, I take coffee every day. Maybe you are having a tea, but it makes you feel like today I'm gonna give my full energy to overcome any challenge because I have a purpose, a mission in life. And sometimes this mission comes later. So as you drive your career, as you experience it, try to see and learn what are the learnings. And as I said, dealing with people, listen to people, getting to know different people is also part of the journey. So this is what I would give as an advice. Anything like, especially in the world today that changed so fast, you can start today with humanistic and tomorrow become a data scientist. Nothing is stuck. So I think like, first of all, is like, find your mission, try to find your purpose. You know, and things will get the, into their shape if you are a needless learner, you know, a continuous learner. I don't know if I have addressed the question properly. No, it's a very uh, much connected to the things that you've said earlier, uh, that uh, the habit or uh, skill of endless learner, uh, learning uh, 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 ability, uh, openness, of their mind, you know, like, uh, and also work with people. The thing that is the beginning is very, uh, sometimes very confusing and uh, very painful in, for some uh, students. So they say, oh, if, if, if most of the students uh, want to start uh, very big, in a very big way, whether there is, their opportunity is less, very limited. So the thing is, uh, you know, there are so many sayings, so many motivational, uh, quotes uh, like work hard for five years or three years or up to 30 years and then you will learn and understand about yourself and later on you can go for you know like bigger positions or etc etc so the thing is uh, you know I have experience of five years working in corporate sectors I've been working in corporate sectors and it is very true yeah that's People, great if, yeah, if people have patience, uh, so they can you know learn. They just have to work hard and uh, have the uh, uh, skill of endless learning. Learner. So the thing is, you, you learn, and uh, one day you will understand. Oh, I learned a lot. Uh, I have uh, gained experience a lot, and now it's time to. The thing is, a distributive leadership, or you have to distribute information, uh, help your community. And the thing is, we always have to engage with the community, engage with the thing that you have said that uh, work, work with different kind of people around the world. It helped you to open your mind and et cetera, et cetera. So working with people and be a team leader, team player is very important. So yeah. the wonderful thing is your, your, uh, the thing that you've been said so far is so much connected and purpose to find the purpose of life is very important for personal uh, for personal life and for also professional life so that uh, next question i want to ask is uh, you have been involved in so many organizations like i have uh, mentioned before uh, how do you manage your time well wow, this focus priorities you know and discipline uh, I, I know i mean that might sound crazy but I have like a calendar and I know exactly how to coordinate this across with my sleeping hours. That is another advice I give to everyone, sleep well. This is so important for you to have resilience, you know, make exercise. So at least four times a week, I go for exercising because then you're gonna have energy. And in the background of all, there is the purpose. You know, but I, again, the day still has 24 hours. So I am very organized, you know, like even when I pick like, well, let me sit, let's sit and grab a coffee because I had to discuss something about any issue at work. I really try to manage it properly, you know, across the calendar, finding priorities. So I, it's a skill I have, I'm very organized and I'm also very well disciplined. This is what helps me, you know, but sometimes what I, because everything like as Jung, how Jung would say, in anything like you have shadow and you have light. 
So sometimes because I'm so well disciplined, so well organized, and if anything like disrupts my routine, I kind of try to get angry. I start to get angry and then I get back to myself because being flexible is super important, especially when you are a team leader, because every day I had like, especially during the COVID, imagine that there was a week that 50% of my team had lost someone for COVID, a friend, father, cousin. So being there, you know, present, available for your team is super important. So this is how I navigate. I try to coordinate, to have discipline, to organize everything properly. But I always keep in mind that like there should be flexibility, you know. And then there is a thing about like communication, you know, guys. I mean, for me, like planning ahead and also being assertive during the meetings and being time saving for your team. I as I I I I I, I enjoy so much having so many side activities. I wish my team had it too. So I honor so much the time they spend with me. So no much talking about myself, you know. If I want in a meeting. I, li I want to listen much more about them than, talk than talking about myself. So this is how I navigate, you know, how we can like plan ahead, provide like good process for my team so things can be more time effective, time saving for them as well. So we can all coordinate things accordingly, you know. Hello, so that also uh, cover, uh, has covered uh, one of the question or advising young people to develop some skills so that they can be future ready while they are students. You know, like uh, you need to have if, uh, for, for our audience that you, you should find your purpose. Uh, otherwise, it's like a, a sheep without a radar in the middle of the sea. If you, do, you don't have a purpose, you go here, there, and it will create your life unhappy. So uh, also, you know, uh, you, you, you have to have discipline. You, you, need to, uh, you have to, you should enjoy life. And yeah. for that, you, you have to, they, they should, you know, the young people, they should be focused, disciplined and organized the thing that you take. And, you know, like need to do some exercise for, you know, be, uh, good health is a good life. Yeah, and, I think like resilience has these four dimensions, yeah. emotional, spiritual, intellectual, and physical, material, you know? So sorry for interrupting you, but it's just- no, no, people, it's speak, people speak so much about resilience. It's really, resilience is not only here, you know? It's not, it's not like because you were born, it's killed with resilience. You develop and you develop when you have these four dimensions addressed. You take care about your body, you take care about your soul, you take pain about your emotions, about your brain as well, you know? Yeah, and also try to volunteer uh, for the community development so that yeah, you can uh, get close to the uh, vulnerable and marginalized people and also uh, be an active part of solving social problems uh, in your community. It will help you uh, mentally and spiritually. Definitely, so, definitely. I totally agree with you. This is so, so, so much, so healing, so much powerful. Exactly. And also, you know, it, uh, we, it grows us as a person who basically uh, contributes something for the development of society. And even people from any sector can contribute uh, for the social development. So, uh, we are almost at the end of our session, uh, but uh, it would be great to hear about your dream that uh, your journey is uh, so adventurous, your life journey, colorful, and it's uh, full of empathy and compassion for other people. It's full of working for human rights. It's, uh, uh, it's to the thing, the tagline you have said, uh, that to make fair life for the other people, right? For everyone. Ensuring for everyone. Yeah. So uh, what's your dream? It's our last question. Well, you know, I think when you think about dream, I think you should connect when you were a child. Like once I was listening to a, I think he was a psychiatrist in a lecture and we, he was discussing about depression, blah, blah, blah. And like, he said like, well, people should put, put, apart, put apart what a dream is what a goal is. So dreams connected to the most simple 
and genuine thing. And usually uh, he used to say that he used to ask their patients to think what, he, what were their dreams, what they used to like to do when they were kids. When I was a kid, when I was a little girl, I used to get my dolls put across me and pretend that everyone speaks a different language and we were all friends and you all live in peace. Of course, I think when I say a fair life, it's a fair life for everyone. But given the situation you have in the world, like, and, and I won't be living like until my 200 years old, I think like I wish as long as I live to see a world where women are more fairly treated, when we have more equal opportunities to everyone. And maybe when I am about to die, I'm going to be telling myself, you know, all my efforts were, were worthy doing. And then women friendly, Vivian, are no longer required because we have started to live a new era of peace. And the challenge may be different. But at least men and women, we live in peace, you know, in a less violent world. So these are my, this is my dream. I don't know how attainable it is, but I'll be working every single day of my life to achieve this. Wonderful. It's good to hear. And it's the, you, know, you see, positivity transfers and it's a, a, to other people very fast. So, uh, we believe uh, that uh, our audience who uh, have watched and uh, will watch uh, later on, that they will be also uh, transformed by your story and your passion, how passionate you are. And also we'd like to uh, promote the end violence against women. So, we should also respect them and we also like men we should also respect people so we should we, we have to start with uh, uh from our family we should respect our parents sisters cousins neighbors then it can you know like be a bigger uh, a bigger bubble of uh, uh positivity and respect for other people and the thing is you know the thing that you have shared we uh, sometimes we hear, we listen to it, we watch it in different like YouTube channels, you know, some positive polls sometimes, but uh, all those together as a story uh, from a real life story is uh, such a, uh, a delicate piece of uh, experience and learning a session it is and very insightful. Uh, thank you so much and uh, uh, Brazil, they are lucky to have you as you have been contributing so much for the community and for the country. So uh, we from SLD uh, wish you very best of luck and we believe you will uh, achieve your goals. Thank you so much. Thank you for our kind of words. It was a pleasure, you know, and please rely on me, whatever you need. If, yeah, I, it will be a tremendous pleasure to support you on your, your journey. Congratulations for you, for your initiative as well, for connecting so many people. And I think let's say like, when you speak about respect, we speak about like, if we can support anyone regardless, race, nationality, language, if we could get together, gosh, yeah. humanity would be amazing. So come on me, thank you so much. And it's a, a very uh, wonderful thing that you, you live uh, very far away and uh, you you have allocated some time to share uh, your journey so that some people can uh, can be inspired uh, through your story and they can learn at least and be be careful about the life and about the journey ahead. That's very amazing. And obrigada, right? It's uh, in Brazil. Perfect. De nada. <laughs> but you are welcome. De nada, yeah. And uh, boa noite. It's good night, right? Good evening. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. You can speak Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I have. Uh, yeah, I have learned some words. So it's. Uh, Thank you so uh, much. It's good to good to know some words. Yeah. So Thank anyway, uh, we wish you best of luck and uh, good evening, and good night, uh, our audience. Uh, we believe you have enjoyed and.
this initiative of uh, sharing information to our guests uh, towards you uh, is our main objective and please uh, be prepared and you know be an endless learner like our like ever and open your mind and enjoy your life and find your purpose and work on that and uh, be healthy and be uh, be careful about you know because the situation is not good so uh, good night our audience and uh, good evening for Anna. Uh, we'll see you our audience uh, we welcome you for this you watch our next session good night and goodbye Anna. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.